Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Katya, and uh, thanks for uh, you know inviting me to this great seminar. Um, yeah. So um, today's uh, work is uh, is joint work with uh, Thibault Lefebvre, uh, who is in Paris, and um, I will sort of discuss this uh, ongoing work. Uh, well, not ongoing, but work that that sort of contains uh, a few of our recent papers. Um, so um, I will talk about compact manifolds um, and M will always be a compacting money and manifold. Um, so so um, <clears throat> and E will be a vector model for this curly E over M equipped with a connection. And uh, the basic problem that I want to address and I want to uh, tell it about you right now is uh, whether the holonomy of, of this connection uh, over closure desics uh, determines the gauge equivalence class of, of, of this connection. Okay, so this is the basic question. Um, so this could have probably some physical also interpretation where this connection could be some magnetic potential Etc. But um, it has also uh, this purely geometrical uh, content, which will be the main um, sort of the main uh, motivation for me. Um, so what we will show actually is that uh, the answer is yes, and a bit surprisingly, um, that only traces of holonomy suffice to determine the, the gauge equivalent class of, of the connection. Um, so we will assume that, that M carries a, a chaotic uh, or an also geodesic flow uh, and that the connection is unitary. Um, and we will show that uh, it will suffice, the traces of holonomy will suffice to determine the, the connection locally and in some cases globally. So this is uh, an interesting result in the point of view that you, know, you have the set of flow geodesics is like a discrete uh, set. It's a countable set and then you have you know the traces of Lona, which is which are just some numbers, and you know from this very discrete set of data, you can recover the, the you know the equivalence class of a connection. So this is uh, um, some some kind of a rigidity phenomenon uh, as well. <clears throat> so um, let me start by explaining these sort of notions, uh, and start by uh, explaining what an anosov flow is. Uh, so the also flow will always be on this curly M, um, and we will say a flow is 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 an also if, if the tangent bundle splits in, into the flow stable, uh, unstable, and stable directions, uh, EU and ES, uh, which are invariant under the under the flow, and there exists uh, certain positive constants such that the the differential of the flow, the linearized flow, is sort of uh, contracting in the stable direction in the future and expanding in, in, the, uh, in the unstable direction. Okay, um, so, so these kind of flows uh, are models for, for hyperbolic dynamics so that they're, they're sensitive upon, you know, uh, changing initial condition. So a slight change in initial condition will, will sort of uh, make, you know, trajectories that are exponentially sort of uh, um, Far from each other in time. Um, and however, I mean, this gives some restrictions on geometry and topology, uh, existence of such flows, but uh, there's, there are nice classes of, of examples, as we will see. So let me just, uh, in a picture, I mean, so stable and unstable bundles, uh, we can view them at a point, you know, as, as a south space or dependent space. And then if we take a vector and push, you know, so, so this in order, if we push it along the flow, um, what what we have is that in this in, in the stable direction it will contract exponentially, so it will you know this component here will shrink, and in the other direction it will expand. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so this will sort of generate this this chaotic behavior, and you know these distributions here and yes they will be. Uh, tangent to uh, some foliations, but but we won't be needing this in, in this talk, so I won't go into this. Um, okay, so uh, we will just say that the Riemannian manifold is an also 
it is geodesic poison also. So the curlier in the case of a Riemannian manifold will be the unit sphere bubble. So the collection of all vectors uh, in the tangent space of, of length one. And the flow will be just uh, at any point X and V, uh, it will be uh, you know, the geodesic at time T and the, the speed of the geodesic at time T. All right, so where, where this gamma XV is the, is the geodesic uh, generated by this initial condition. All right, so this is the flow. And um, the examples that I have in mind is uh, first and, and probably most importantly, that if, if, G ha if, if M has negative sectional curvature, uh, then it is an also. So this was shown by an also uh, many years ago. And there exist certain examples with portions of negative curvature, uh, positive curvature. So you could have some portions of positive curvature, for instance, like two spheres, and then you could connect the, the two spheres by, by certain portions of, of, of negative curvature, and you get uh, an also geodesic flow on a surface embedded in R3. So this is one example by, by Donna and you. Um, so if, if, uh, if the geodesic flow is an also, uh, what's important is that there is a bijection between the, the free homotopy classes in this uh, curly C and closed geodesics. Uh, so in this picture, we have like a free homotopy class and then we could homotope it to this closed geodesic in the middle. And uh, the, the length will be noted by this LG in this homotopy class. Okay, so... Um, let me just briefly recall the, the connect, what are connections um, for you, uh, for, for, for those of you who do, who do not uh, deal with these every day. And so our connection is just a map between uh, um, C infinity, so the, the sections of this vector bundle and the uh, uh, one forms with values in this vector bundle. And locally, it looks like V plus A, where A is a matrix of one forms and it acts on, on sort of vectors vector value function. Um, but for us, I mean, the other interpretation will be more meaningful if, if a connection allows you to sort of canonically uh, identify fibers in a, in a uh, over points more or less. And given a curve, um, there's a way to, uh, to sort of move parallel vectors by solving this, this sort of uh, OD along the, the curve. Um, and so uh, from a vector above A, you get a vector above uh, B, okay? And if, if, if the curve is closed, of course, you come back to the same, uh, you can come to, back to the same point. And this is what holonomy on a closed sort of, uh, on a closed loop is, what it looks like. Um, a connection is unitary uh, if it's com compatible with inner product on, on, on E. And if all the, the parallel transport is unitary. Um, so now let me uh, introduce you know, these large objects, um, the, the moduli spaces of all, of all connections. So, um, so the, the space of connections is, is an affine space. It's uh, uh, sort of modeled on this uh, endomorphism value of two uh, one forms. So, you know. Uh, Set of such A, so the, the matrices are one point. Um, and the, the gauge group is the set of all representatives of, of E, and it acts on, on this set of all connections uh, by pullback. All right. And, and pullback is just uh, uh, pre composition and post composition by, by, uh, by this isomorphism as given here. Um, of course, we have a group action now of this large object, uh, infinite dimensional, and another object, infinite dimensional, we can sort of uh, quotient and we, we obtain sort of this, uh, this space, the moduli space of connections on E. Um, uh, two connections are said to be uh, gauge or cool, and if there's a, you know, this unitary isomorphism that pulls back one connection to the other, okay? So they belong to the same orbit of this action. Um, so if, if, you, if I want to consider all vector bundles on, on the manifold, I will just denote it by this, um, this A, uh, along with uh, the, the, you know, the group action. So it, it's the moduli space of all connections on all bundles. 
on online. Okay. Uh, right. So let me introduce one of the main key players in this uh, result. Uh, so first, let us know the you know the set of all primitive free homotopy classes by this C sharp. What this means is just you do, you do not uh, want uh, loops that sort of go twice uh, you know around each other uh, around the a point. So what we go, uh, what we do is uh, we consider these loops, uh, free homotopy classes, and uh, the holonomy along uh, along you know a point. You fix a point in the loop, and you uh, you take the holonomy uh, of the connection at this point. Okay. So this this depends clearly uh, on the choice of the point that that you fixed this x c sharp, uh, but it depends mildly. I mean, it depends up to conjugation. Um, and if you pick a gauge equivalent connection, actually, it will also uh, give you uh, depend by conjugation. All right. So, uh, what does not depend on either the choice of the point or the equivalent class is is the trace. Uh, so we can define the primitive trace map as as this map from the space of all connections uh, into just uh, sequences. Uh, this countably uh, countable sequences, and we just take the traces. Okay, and the main question I mean that I want to uh, consider is more precise: is when is this primitive trace map injected? Okay, it's a general question. Um, okay, so let me just now uh, state the theorem. Um, so we will need well two assumptions. Um, in the end, I mean, somehow the, these two things will be valid on an open and dense set of all connections. It you know, won't uh, matter too much, but uh, the first condition is that, you know, it's a geometric condition that, that there's no non-trivial sub-bundles that are preserved by tra parallel transport along, along uh, uh, geodesics, okay? So this is some kind of uh, irreducibility condition. Uh, and the second uh, condition is that the certain sort of uh, generalized X-ray transform uh, is solenoidally injected. Okay, I, I won't define this uh, yet, and uh, I'll you know just postpone it. I mean, probably to the end of the talk, because it requires the introduction of of these polyquaternal resonances. So, so I, I will not speak about it at the moment. Um, so the theorem. Let me say the theorem. So we take an also manifold of dimension at least three and the vector bundle over M. And then the, our theorem says that the primitive trace map is um, a local injective. So near, near points, uh, near connections uh, that satisfy A and B. And it's globally injective when restricted to, uh, you know, sums of, of uh, direct sums of line bundles. So one dimensional. Uh, rank one, sorry, uh, vector bundle, or to con you know connections with uh, small uh, curvature. Okay. Um, so as I said, um, as I said, you know it was we, we showed in you know, uh, some two papers of ours we showed that both conditions A and B are uh, are open and dense, are valid on a, an open and dense set of connections. So you could say that you know an open and dense set of connections, this primitive trace map is uh, locally injected. Okay. Um, I will explain what you know the CPDN topology means. But uh, are there any questions regarding the statement of the theorem at this point? Okay. Um, So this local injectivity means that that um, you know there exists some n, and for our methods, I mean this means that there is some large n because we, we do not optimize it in, in this sense, such that uh, in, in this C to the n quotient topology uh, on on the moduli space um, um, and any sort of base point this nabla e to take a just a base point. Um, so for for any other two connections. 
such that uh, such that you know you can um, pull back these two connections close to this initial one, uh, then you know the quality of of these traces, uh, the trace maps implies that you know the gauge classes are the same actually. Okay, so this is the, what local injectivity means. It just it's just the portion topology on the on the, on the moment case. Uh, what we also show is that when dimension is odd, then the the primitive trace map determines the the topology topology of the vector bundle. It determines the uh, the vector bundle of isomorphism. Um, and as an example, um, if M is a surface, um, then um, we consider two bundles. There are two obvious candidates. One is uh, just the, the trivial line bundle with the uh, trivial Phi connection. And it's, you know, the, the parallel transport is just a constant. You know, you always you know, solve the, you know, um, the parallel transport dot equals zero. I mean, it means that, you know, you move constantly vectors. And what you get is just, uh, you know, the you know, trace map is just one, 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 one. Forever. Uh, if you take the canonical line bundle, which is just the uh, this zero comma one part of, of the cotangent bundle, uh, complexified cotangent bundle, then the there is a canonical sort of connection, which is the, the Levi Civita, uh, just uh, sort of induced on, on this. Then uh, you can actually see because you know on a surface there are just two directions and you, you know, Levi Civita, uh, you know, uh, fixes the tangent vector to the to a geodesic, right? Um, because the geodesic, by definition of a geodesic, you know, it's, it's parallel, the, the geodesic direction. And then the normal direction is also fixed because uh, Levi Civita respects the metric. And so this means that, that you know, you actually uh, obtain the identity as the parallel transport on a closed geodesic. And so what you get is uh, also a sequence of ones, uh, but this this means that you know in dimension two that there is some topological obstruction you know because this bundle is not isomorphic to the trivial one. Um, but I will come back to this later. Um, okay, so um, what Federer did is in his work he classified all the transparent connections and surfaces. Um, and uh, transparent means that exactly this, that the, the parallel transport along the uh, closure does it is, is the identity, okay? Or in other means that, that the trace is sort of the maximal uh, is equal to the rank of the bundle. And th there's a lot of transparent connections. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, what, what uh, Guillermo, Pachan, and Salah Newman did in 16 is that they sort of uh, considered uh, other negative equipment. So another uh, remark. So 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 this problem is like very similar to a certain problem on, on manifold boundary, where you consider like the scattering map, where you take a uh, you know, boundary and geodesics, and you ask whether the, the parallel transport along the geodesics um, determines the, the class of the of the connection. But this is a lot more data. Um, somehow, it's not uh, discrete. Uh, but in this context, uh, you know, Patrick Salo and, and Woman and Zhu did uh, some work on uh, manifolds with uh, convex relation, and there was some work on simple surfaces. But I mean, the the, um, the philosophy, I mean, it should be, it could be, I mean, that sort of a lot of these sort of manifolds with boundary with some sort of geometrical property can be embedded into an also manifold. And this is sort of a recent uh, embedded theorem uh, of Chen, Chenko, and Gogoli. <clears throat> so some theorems actually can be used to proving, uh, uh, you know, things geometrical uh, things about um, unknown manifolds. In particular, I mean geometric inverse problems. Um, okay, so th there is an analogy with uh, with uh, the mark length spectrum problem. Um, of, of the Holonon inverse problem and, and the, the analogy is quite straightforward. So the you know in this problem you consider the set of all negatively curved metrics and you know the the map the max metric to the set of lengths of closure desics and 
you know, in particular, asks whether the the, the diffeomorphism class of the isometry class of the metric determined by the data. And our approach is similar in the spirit to the, to the recent approach of Guillermo and uh, Lefebvre. Um, right here, this a table by uh, where, you, where you, could, you can see, I mean, the, uh, you know, different objects. I mean, the, the one, you know, there's you know, this infinite dimensional space of metrics and here you have an infinite dimensional space of connections. It's, you know, these infinite dimensional groups, the gauge group and the diffeomorphism group. And then you have the data. Um, so in one problem, I mean, delinearization is the uh, delinearization of this problem is somehow the integration on two tensors. And here, um, this corresponds to our condition B somehow that the X-ray, uh, certain you know, generalized X-ray on endomorphism value, the one forms is injected. And it's a, it's a, the linear generalized problem is this. Okay, so now let me switch to the to, uh, to a different problem. Um, it's an intermediate corollary of our theorem. Um, it's, an, it's, a, it's about now an inverse spectral problem. So the uh, length spectrum of, uh, of an anosometal of, of a manifold is the set of lengths of all quadratics with multiplicity. And we say that the that it's simple if if all closure ethics have uh, distinct uh, lengths. Now this is also with uh, counters with multiplicity. Uh, however, this is known to be a generic condition, and this, in particular for a loss of uh, manifolds, since this is an open condition, you can easily see that this is true. I mean, because you can perturb things, and there's always a discrete and a finite number at a certain length. But for even more general metrics, I mean, this is generically true. Not an awesome metric. Um, so the connection Laplacian is 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 the op and this will be uh, our operator in this in this inverse spectral problem is the operator uh, Nabla star Nabla, and it's a second order elliptic Sapatorian and non-negative operator, and he acts on the sections of the of the vector bundle. Okay, and so so this Nabla star is the uh, is the adjoint. Um, the L2 adjoint of, of, of NABLA acting in these sections. Um, and right, so this is very similar to say the Laplace called Chani operator, right? I mean, so this is the Laplace is, is D star D, and this is just NABLA star NABLA. Um, so there is a discrete spectrum and uh, it, it's non negative. And we just write it as lambda zero, lambda one, et cetera. So the the spectrum uh, it, it depends only on on uh, on the class. So by by this sort of uh, brackets, I always mean the the gauge class, the gauge equivalent class, and the, the moduli space. Um, simply because you always sort of act by uh, this um, conjugation, and so the you know the, again sections are always you know invariant by by this. You can go from one to the other. So, so there's a spectrum map between the moduli space and you know that that maps the connection, the gauge class of the connection to the spectrum, okay. And then there, of course, the the problem that, as in the uh, other in the spectral problem is whether this spectrum map determines the, the gauge class, okay. And um, so we can you know immediately get a result. I mean, using uh, our theorem and the trace formula of Duesterman and Gilliman. Um, so, uh, what they consider is this sort of uh, wave trace um, as a distribution. And if you take, uh, you know, multiply this by, by, uh, by this expression T minus the length, and then uh, what you get, I mean, is, is a certain definite expression. And here we're using the spectrum is simple. Otherwise, we could get in principle, you know, some other terms. Um, so what we get is, is sort of the, exactly the trace of the holonomy times the length of the closure desic, and then uh, divided by some determinant it depends on the Poincaré map. So the Poincaré map is the, uh, is the linearized sort of uh, um, linearized flow somehow at, at the, uh, on the transverse of the geodesic. Okay. So, so what we get is, is, is this, I mean, this is immediately, immediate uh, concept of the trace formula. Um, and what this means is that, you know, 
the, the lengths of, you know, if you have two connections, the lengths are always, you know, we don't, you know, uh, change the geometry, we just change the, the connections. And what we get, I mean, if, if, if the spectra, spectra are the same, is that the traces of the holonomy along closure deserts are the same. Okay, and so the, you know, say for Polaroid, that the spectrum map is, you know, has the same A and B properties as in the main theorem. It's locally injective near a generic point. Um, uh, so by generic here, I, uh, I mean, like, it's valid on an open and dense set. Um, of the moduli space, uh, and it's globally injective uh, when restricted to so these you know direct sums of line bundles again or connections with small curvature. Okay, so there are some you know remarks in place here. So the so there are certain uh, counter examples to injectivity of S the line bundles of covers on the covers of surfaces, but then the simple length spectrum is is violated. I mean because you, you sort of you lift closure desert to a you know, several copies of it. Um, and this is, I mean, this is, this is known by the, by the name Sunada method, the, the, the construction. And there's another famous question by, by Katz, I mean, whether, uh, whether one can hear the shape of the drum and one should kind of see um, this theorem or this, you know, this question of injectivity of, of S as a sort of an, an analog of this question. Um, there are a few results uh, in the same direction. I mean, uh, the first one is, of course, the classical one by Gilliman and Kazan, who, uh, who proved that the potential Q, a function Q, can be determined from the spectrum of, of, this, of this operator. So delta G is the Laplace of Chami operator. And there are other words, like Kirchner, Fugino, uh, et cetera. Uh, but our result, I mean, seems to be uh, the first one, I mean, uh, regarding this, this operator, uh, this complete operator, but not just that, I mean, it, it seems to be uh, more difficult, I mean, to get results when, when there's an infinite dimensional sort of uh, symmetry group or a gauge group acting. And in particular, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, the question by Katz asked, I mean, and, and sort of this, this local injectivity of, of in, in the case of uh, Laplace Beltrami is still open. I mean, in, in this negatively curved setting, so you know th this seems to be a, a fair progress. I mean, in, in somehow um, understanding this type of problems. Um, okay, so just let me know at this point. I mean, whether uh, you have questions, and then I'll go into ideas of the proof, etc. Okay, so, um, so, right, so there's a, there's a, let's say two ingredients of, of, of two main ingredients uh, of the proof. Um, and one is a, one is a, you know, a new theorem in, in hyperbolic dynamics. It's a Lipschitz type theorem. And it's related to, I mean, also to representation theory somehow, somehow surprisingly uh, to us. Um, and it reduces basically the question, I mean, of, of injectivity to a certain, you know, say transport problem on, 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 the, on the unit sphere bundle. Um, and the another one is the interplay between the geometry of this moduli space of this sort of uh, big space of, of connections and the theory of, of these polycotural resonances. And, and we sort of, uh, Related to through uh, to uh, the micro local analysis and some and some some estimates really. Um, okay, so and and maybe for geometers, I mean, it's useful to have in mind. I mean, the following analogy that flat connections, um, so the ones with uh, with no zero curvature, uh, up to gauge equivalence. I mean, they they correspond to representations uh, of pi one up to conjugacy. Um, you know, because flat ones, you know, they, they you can homotope the loops and they don't depend on the, on the particular sort of choice in the homotopy class. But here we will see that that unitary connections 
uh, up to this dynamic equivalence, this cross cycle equivalence, uh, correspond to representations of, of, of this object that we introduced. And it's, uh, it's called, we call it the Perry's uh, pre-monoid. So Perry was a British uh, mathematician. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so the main dynamical theorem is the following one. Uh, so we, we have a transitive and also a flow. Transitive just means that there, is a, there exists a one orbit of the flow that's, that's dense in the whole space. Um, and we consider a, a Hermitian bundle as usual. And we know that you know, a connection, uh, a connection on, on E, it gives rise to a unitary cross cycle. Uh, C, and uh, it's given by parallel transport, right? So, so you have you take a you know point X and you, you move it by the flow of, uh, to phi T of X, um, and the, the you take the vector and along this curve given by the flow you, uh, you you take the parallel transport with respect to this connection, okay? And that's how you get a um, the cross cycle. It, Satisfy the same property as the flow, I mean, but it's sort of non abelian, so it doesn't commute really, but it satisfies uh, this, this property. Um, so, our theorem is about um, connections that, that, well, like cross cycles more generally, but we phrase it through connections. So, if, if, we, uh, if you take two vector bundles equipped with two connections and they induce uh, these two unitary cross cycles, um, uh, by parallel transport, then if if for each primitive closed orbit uh, you, they give the same trace um, when you put a parallel transport on the orbit, then there exists a, a sort of a gauge between the, the first and the, the second vector bundle, such that you know it conjugates one to the other, basically. Um, okay. So it, it conjugates one to the other. So you, you apply the, this isomorphism at a point, and then you go uh, with the other sort of, uh, with the first with first or the other uh, full cycle, and then you apply the other, and then you come back, and then you, I mean, this this is the identity, basically. So this is the, uh, what it means to be, uh, what it means to, to have a cross cycle equivalent. Okay, so this is the theorem. Um, so in particular, uh, we have that the two bundles are sort of isomorphic. I mean, a priori, they don't need to be. And this is a consequence of the theorem. And this result, I mean, such type of result goes back to work of Lipschitz in the 70s, where he considered you know, the problem of, of uh, having a function that integrates uh, to zero along all closure basics. Um, and, and then proving that sort of there exists some some function that sort of um, when you apply the geodesic or let's say geodesic vector field uh, x to, to you or, or the generator of the Anosov flow more generally, you get the function. Okay. And this is sort of more on the abelian side. And what we show is like really something non abelian. Um, okay. So I should say that, uh, as I said, this. Really, you know, turns our problem into something uh, about transport equations, and uh, you know, if 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 m is equal to the unisphere bundle, and you know, the the, the vector bundles are pullbacks of the bundles down below, um, then what we get actually this p is satisfies a certain transport equation. Okay, and then form here means that you consider the, the homomorphism connection of um, you know, the, the bundle of homomorphisms from E2 to E1. And you know, really showing that P depends only on the X variable because, because it depends on X and V variable, uh, we could see that you, know, you can pull back one connection to the other. Okay, so this is the, this reduction. Okay, so, um, Okay, just, I'm just checking the, the time here. Um, so the, uh, the main idea of, of, of the proof of this dynamical result is the introduction of, of this notion of Perry's free monoid. 
And to introduce it to you, um, I will sort of, I need to define what, what it means to be a homoclinic point. So you, you just take one arbitrary uh, X star and you fix it forever. Uh, that's periodic. And we say that, that it, a certain point P is homoclinic to, to it if um, the distance, um, when, you, when you use the flow on, on P with a certain shift, uh, and the flow on X star, they, they converge in the future, okay? And in other words, I mean, you, uh, th this could be sort of uh, reformulated in terms of, of, of stable and unstable foliations, but this is a, a more direct way. Um, so, so there's a certain shift, uh, P zero plus and minus. So we, we want it to be, you know, as, so there are two points and then, you know, you, you want them to converge both in the future and in the past. Okay, so there are two conditions. Um, and we say our orbit is homoclinic to X star if it contains a point homoclinic to, uh, to, uh, to X star, okay? So it's possible to show that, you know, there's, there's an abundance of these homoclinic points and they're all, you know, this, this proof is uh, based on this property of, of, of shadowing property for, for an also flows. Um, so what this means is that if you have a certain um, orbit that comes back, you know, almost back to itself, uh, you know, for this almost being like very, very small, then you can actually get like a closed uh, orbit for your flow. Okay, so there's a lot of closed orbits. That's the uh, idea. And so the homoclinic orbits are also, uh, you know, they're dense using this property. Um, Anyway, the, the, the Paris free monoid is really the monoid uh, generated by uh, H, the set of homoclinic orbits. So it's, it's, it's the formal set of words, really uh, gamma one uh, to some power, gamma K to some power. Um, and we, we, uh, we ask for gamma one and gamma K to be uh, elements of some of the homoclinic orbits, okay? So you have just you know, some kind of multiplication and the empty word corresponds to the NA. Okay, so this is the object we want to look at. And now we will define a certain representation of this object. So, um, so, so we take an, an arbitrary homoclinic orbit and, and sort of consider, you know, uh, so let's focus on this picture for now. So there is a closed orbit, it's this thing in black. And then uh, there's a homoclinic orbit. So this is the, the gamma. I mean, it's, I've uh, drawn it in different, different uh, colors to make it easier to, uh, to see this later. But this is one orbit and it's homoclinic. So it comes wraps in the past around this orbit and it wraps in the future. And what we have uh, here is um, really uh, the representation is some kind of File a transport from the past uh, to the future. Okay. And so uh, here um, there's some renormalization process. So there's some sort of um, choice involved. But in the end, I mean, it, it, it's all sort of equivalent. So, so we have to take, you know, because the parallel transport along the closed orbit, it could be, it could be something that's not the identity. Okay. And so if you parallel transfer a lot, a lot of times, I mean, to something that's uh, not identity, I mean, you will not converge in the end. So you have to make some choice. Anyway, um, so these points X and plus and minus, uh, so, so these are the points uh, that on, on the orbits that you know, converge to X star, you know, translates of each other. So if you translate this point X minus, X and minus, for instance, by uh, by the period that's this P star, then you will also have you know the point with the same property it will sort of converge exponentially to X star. Okay, so the representation is defined by uh, taking parallel transport along the uh, shortest geodesic here. So we take some arbitrary metric, uh, then flowing to uh, to certain point X zero minus. Um, and then flowing again to the point x zero plus because you know the, the, these points that converge in the future and it, in the in the uh, in the past they could be different distinct a priori so there's some sort of unsynchronized 
part here. And then we take parallel transfer here and parallel transfer to Xn plus and then back. Okay, and then we take the limit and this defines as a representation. Okay, and I've tried to color code here what what uh, you know parts there are. So so this red is red here, the blues are, are here, and the purple is here and here. Okay. Anyway, so we get a representation from, from this peri free monoid to the unitary group at X star. Uh, and the key lemma sort of that that um, makes everything work is that if you have two trace equivalent sort of representations, sorry, the trace equivalent connections in the sense that they are cross cycles defined by them, uh, parallel transfer and closed geodesics have, sorry, closed orbits now have, uh, are equal, then these representations are actually isomorphic. Okay, so there, there exists a P star uh, in the unitary uh, group above X star such that you know, it conjugates one to another. Uh, and by algebra, by representation theory, it suffices to, uh, for these to have equal characters. And so for simplicity, I mean, I will, I will uh, very quickly, I mean, uh, go through, uh, through this proof. Uh, let's take, to the proof of this lemma, let's take two homoclinic orbits, gamma one and two, and um, let's try to show that the traces are equal, okay? Uh, so this means that they have the same characters. So the, you know, by definition, the row one of, of gamma is, we can approximate it basically by, by this procedure from the previous slide, all right? So we have row one of comma n of gamma one and then row one comma n gamma two. So we take larger and larger pieces of this homo, these homothetic orbits and then there's some remainder goes to zero. Okay, and then again, using the shadowing property, uh, since we have two homoclinic orbits that come back very close uh, to each other infinitely many times at X star, we can take a closed orbit sort of that's very close to, to this concatenation. And so in the end, um, we call this gamma tilde. Uh, we, what we get is that, uh, you know, this, this product is very close to the, um, to the parallel transport along this closed orbit. You know, up to conjugation, then there's some very, very small uh, remainder. Anyway, taking taking n equal to, n goes to infinity and taking traces here, so we lose uh, this conjugation. Um, you know, the trace of the C1 is equal to the trace of C2, and hence very close to row 2n and then of gamma 1, row 2n of gamma 2, etc. Taking them to infinity, we get that, you know, they have the same trace. And, you know, there, there's some sort of details to fill in, but this is uh, the idea. And this is the, the picture uh, I had in mind, I should have put in the previous slide. But anyway, I mean, the, uh, we have two homoclinic orbits. One is red, one is blue. Um, and this green thing is the, uh, is the closed orbit that approximates. So, so and there's a lot of points around here, so maybe you don't see it at the moment. But um, so there is, you know, these X ends at the things that are very close in the past and the future. And the, uh, there's one and two. With respect to which um, um, homoclinic orbit I'm, I'm sort of thinking of, and then the gamma tilde is the shadowing one. And the proof is finished by pushing this p star along the, the homoclinic orbit. So we, you know, we take, took something, defined an um, object coming from the homoclinic orbit, and then we pushed it back to the x star, and then we push it back. So we got something from algebra, and then we push it back. And um, anyway. It, it works uh, somehow surprisingly well. And we show that P is uh, the, the thing that we get is ellipsis continuous. And then there's a regularity result um, by Bonpono and whatever. And then we get the P smooth through the lemma. Okay. Um, so, Katya, can you just tell me how, how much time I have? Because I don't have a, a clock. Uh, four, four, mini uh, four minutes. Or okay, thank you. You can go with it. You can take okay, more. perfect. Okay, I have uh, two more slides to go. So this this uh, finishes the proof of the lemma. And um, yeah, so so now I mean I'm I'm gonna tell you uh, a bit about like very quickly uh, at a quick pace about the moduli space of connections and uh, and resonances. So this relation between like the geometry and and dynamics. Um, 
So taking one equivalence class of, of connections, um, we can always sort of, as I said, it's an affine space model exactly on this uh, C-infinity sections of the endomorphism uh, bundle. And because we're taking unitary things, so these are two term I mean, so, so this is what SK means. Um, and we consider the operator um, XA, that's uh, exactly the uh, transport operator. So, so you take the, the pullback of the, of the homomorphism connection, where you on, on the bundle E, on one side you put uh, nabla plus A, and on the other side you put nabla, okay? Um, so the homomorphism, and we pull back this connection to the unit sphere bundle, so SM. So it's, it's an operator on sections of over uh, SM. And we, X here is the generator of the geodesic flow. So, so we get really a, you know, an operator, a transport operator. Um, okay, so remember the opacity assumption, it means that basically the R bundle is dynamically irreducible. Uh, by this assumption, it's an exercise to check that actually uh, X, which is the you know, pullback of the anamorphism connection when A is zero, it has a simple resonance and it's spanned by, by the identity. Okay, so I will explain maybe uh, a bit more in, in coming uh, sort of uh, points what resonances are. So, so, so polycontrol resonances, they are, they are poles of the metamorphic extension of, of, uh, of this operator. And this is really uh, where sort of micro analysis comes in. I mean, it's uh, in the heart of the definition, very really definition of these objects of resonances. Um, so proving that this object has a meromorphic extension, whereas Z is in the complex plane, uh, depends on this crucial. Uh, and the poles are resonances. So you can think of them actually as some kind of spectrum of the of the of the generator of this of this operator X or this first order operator. Anyway, by continuity of these resonances with respect to this A, uh, we we uh, there's a small contour gamma such that you know for A small enough, no resonance. You know, comes through this gamma, this this con this uh, small contour, and so we can define as in spectral theory this projection, um, and this lambda a is actually nothing but the uh, resonance. It's it's the it's the pole. How the pole moves as we change a. You know, so we change the operator and the pole changes. So you know, if you denote by phi of a the gauge equivalent. Uh, Connection. Um, so now this is completely like related to geometry. This point, the geometry of connections. Uh, so phi of a is the, you know, the, the connection, unique connection obtained from send by sending nabla a nabla plus a to Coulomb gauge, which just means that you know there's there's some gauge fixing happening here. You have you know gauge group, and we uh, fix a you know a thing on, on the orbit. By asking for this condition to be true. Anyway, it turns out that the uh, there's a convexity phenomenon uh, happening, and it comes from the fact that this lambda a being a functional on this sort of neighborhood of of, of nabla, um, it has some convexity properties, and so this is the the, the interesting thing that happens, um, and we we you know we prove a certain estimate. Uh, depending on this uh, functional convex functional lambda and the distance between the Coulomb gauge and the, the guy in the center. Okay, so there's a there's this picture. I will explain this, and uh, I'm uh, I'm finished. So um, so you know this is the gamma. So this is the the contour that I was uh, telling you about, um, and these crosses are the polycontrol resonances of X A of this operator. Okay, so they're lying somewhere. Outside the contour, inside the contour, we just have zero at, for a equals zero. So it, it corresponds to, to the fact that you know the x it kills the the identity. Okay, so there's always a resonance at zero. Once we uh, take a and then we uh, uh, you know take a for something small, this resonance moves and it becomes this lambda a. Okay, so there's this continuity of, of lambda a. Uh, on the other hand, in the moduli space, we have this picture. So there's, a, there's the orbit 
So, so there, actually there's just this fixed connection, nabla E, and then there is its uh, orbit. So it's all the pullbacks of nabla E. So this is the orbit. And then there is the, the slice here. So this is the, the slice, meaning that it's um, given by uh, gauge fixing. So this is the, uh, uh, the Coulomb gauge of, of all the points. For example, nabla E plus A, we send it to phi of A, which lies on this line here. Okay, so and, and you know it's in Coulomb gauge means that exactly belongs to this space. Anyway, the distance between nabla and phi is, is controlled by lambda a. So this is what what we uh, what we uh, proved here in the last line, and what this means uh, in the end is that if there's a you know this p that's given by the dynamical theorem, um, it's in the kernel of exactly of this this operator. Okay. And this means that lambda is zero. And this again means that phi of A is equal to nabla. Okay. And then, then you know, this implies the final conclusion. Okay. So I think I'm uh, slightly over time. So uh, I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mikhailov, for the very nice talk. Are there any questions or comments, please? Any questions or comments, please? I have a quick question. Please, please. Yeah. Thanks, Mihailo. It was a great talk. Um, about the assumption of the about the X-ray transform on one form. Mm -hmm. um, is this something that's already covered by by all uh, the previous literature, or is this something that uh, you kind of have to make an assumption on faith. So, um, yeah, so this is, this is a good question. Yeah, I didn't uh, explain this very well. Um, I just mentioned in the beginning. And um, yeah, so we proved a result saying that this holds on an open and dense set of all uh, connections. And so we, we use this sort of, uh, we use this uh, result to say, I mean, to, you know, it gives a meaning to our result, you know, somewhere. Like, it means that the conclusions A and B of the theorem are valid for, for an open and dense set of connections. And so, yeah, so, so this is the, the, the thing that we proved. Um, and I didn't define this uh, property or the condition. It means that, you know, it's related to this resolvent and, and uh, uh, it's related to resolvent uh, of, of, of X, of, the, of this operator that I introduced in the, this slide. And um, the mm -hmm. yeah, you can, you can use it, you can define it basically as, you know, there's some P1 star operator and you know, push forwards and pullbacks, mm -hmm. and then there's a resolvent in, in the middle. So there's, that's one way. The other way to see it is, is uh, straight through, um, you know, through these uh, homological equations. I mean, where you want to solve like something X U equal F, where F is like four quarter one in the, in the velocity variable. Yeah. And then you, you, ha you can say that, you know, the, the U needs to be like a function on the, on the base. So you can also phrase it in this way. So that, but the best, the easiest way for us was to uh, phrase it in, in terms of the resolvent. Okay. Thank you. I hope this answers. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments, please? Any questions or comments, please? Okay, if not, thank you very much, Mikhailov, for the very nice talk, for the very interesting talk. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Thank you very much.